Hey, what's going on? This is PKJ, Pastor Patrick Jones, coming to you today. It's Thursday, Throwback Thursday, March 24th, 2011. And we're coming to you to tell you a throwback story from my childhood. And so here we go. This story happened when I was about 12 years old. I was 12 years old. And 12 years old, you know, I, I grew up on hip-hop. I grew up on rap. Uh, and, you know, this was before the gangster rap. Ever, ever really, you know, started matriculating into uh, the speakers. This was still when when rap was basically mostly East Coast, uh, and also you had uh, a few people down south who were rapping. This was down in Florida, and that's when nasty, nasty, nasty rappers uh, came out. Everybody know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Uncle Luke. Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker was nasty. He was nasty, boy. And uh, my friend, uh, Andronica Handy. Andronica, uh, he was the, the only uh, person that I ever knew of in Eudora, Arkansas, to get a brand new car when he turned 13. Everybody wanted to be his friend then. Forget about Sweet 16. But he got a brand new car when he turned 13. And and Dronica had, I'm gonna tell you what kind of car he had. It was a Yugo. And you could trip on a Yugo all you want to, but back then, you know, he was the only one that had, a, it was a brand new car. We weren't tripping about whether or not it was a Yugo or not. It, it was the bomb to us. It was just like a Cadillac to us. We we 13 years old. So the red Yugo, shot at Yugo. You know, this cat driving. You know, that's when you can get your permit at 13. You know, it's cat driving at 13. What? Pow! Uh, got a system put in it. And we used to go out to Andronica's car during lunch and listen to the radio. Somebody happened to bring him a tape. That's when cassette tapes was in there. Somebody happened to bring him a tape. And he put it in and we were listening. Uh, and it was Luke. Skywalker. And man, uh, we were sitting out there listening uh, to Luke Skywalker. The song got stuck in my head. Uh, and so we get ready to go over to the gym. Uh, it's between lunch and P.E. And uh, walking through the, the corridor or the, the, the foyer of the gym. All of a sudden, I open my mouth and I say, hey, we want some. And by the time it gets out of my mouth, Coach Horace Watkins is coming around the corner. And he hears the last word come out of my mouth. And by this time, I couldn't hide. I couldn't say nobody else did it. The only thing you can say, Jones, come here. Now, let me explain to you, Coach Watkins. I think he played professional football for a short stint. Uh, Coach Watkins uh, stood about six foot five. Six foot five, uh, between 280 and 320, somewhere in there. Joker was swole. He carries me in his office. Now, during this time, that's when corporate punishment uh, was okay in school. And I think they need to bring it back. Uh, and he takes this powder. Now, I told you, Coach Watkins, six foot five. Around 300 pounds. He squeezed that board back. Mm. You know, they had wood paddles. And then they had plexiglass paddles. Uh, that they could cut to a certain thickness. He had a plexiglass paddle. And it was thick enough that it wasn't going to break. Now, he had 
holes in his paddle. And when he hit you, it sucked your butt cheeks through the hole. I couldn't feel my behind for about five days after that. Now, I'm not embellishing. I'm telling you, it, I mean, you what? I remember that palace so well that uh, a few months ago, I was in Eudora for a funeral. Standing in the pulpit, I saw Coach Watkins get up with his wife to get ready to come around and view the body. I just hoping he wasn't going to see me. And he put the fear of God and Horace in me. And it all came because of me repeating the lyrics to the song I heard by Uncle Luke. So what's the moral of the story? Moral of the story is this. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of it flows the issues of life. There are several ways to get to our heart. One of the main ways to get to our heart or our mind or our emotions is through our ears. And so whatever we allow in is what's going to come out. And so you have to make sure that you don't allow all this negative mess to get into you. Because what will come out of you can get you in trouble. It can get you killed. Because I like to got killed. And so, and so all I'm trying to say is, watch what you allow to come into your ears. Watch what you allow uh, people to say over you because it can cause you to get into a bind that you can't get out of. Because I told you I didn't have anywhere to run when Coach Horace Watkins were coming my way. I couldn't do nothing. So watch what you listen to. Because what you listen to will eventually come out. And when it comes out, it may not have the right effect over your life. People have lost jobs because of what they said. People have gotten killed because of what they said. People have gone to jail because of what they said. Your words will affect your destiny. And what affects your destiny more than your words is what you hear. Because you can't speak it unless you heard it first. Pow! And when you hear it, it'll get in your a hearing. It'll get in your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your words, your words are, br are what brought punishment into your life. I don't want you to be like that. So learn how to watch what you hear. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And with faith, all things are possible. But watch this. Also, when you allow negative stuff to come into your ears, it also affects what you speak. And when you speak it, it will come back and put you in a bad situation. And I don't want you to find yourself like me. You, when you had, were between a rock and a hard place and you couldn't get out and you have to face the Horace Watkins of your life. Whew. That's all I'm trying to say. Hey, this is Helen Jones, second son, saying life is too short to play games, so keep it real. Two fingers to the north. We out of here.